When people mention Gloucestershire, many will think of the Cotswolds. Well, that's perfectly understandable, because the Cotswolds is a beautiful area and does cover a large part of Gloucestershire. However, although I spent a lot of my life in Gloucestershire when I was growing up, it wasn't in the Cotswolds. It was in a much smaller area in the western part of the county. I lived in the district for just under three years from birth, and then when I moved to Chepstow, I still spent a lot of my time in this district. Well, today I've returned after a very, very long time. This, this is my Gloucestershire. This is the Forest of Dean. I'm standing on the top of New Fancy View, which gives wonderful panoramas over the Forest of Dean, and is a viewing site for bird watchers. New Fancy Colliery was opened in 1827, and in 1880 it produced almost 8,500 tonnes of coal. The colliery remained in operation until 1944, after which its spoil heap was landscaped and converted into this amazing viewing site. This is the Roll of Honour sculpture, commissioned by the Forest of Dean Local History Society to honour the miners and quarrymen of the forest who had lost their lives in accidents whilst at work. Constructed by Graham Tyler and John Wakefield and unveiled in 2005, it consists of three elements, stone, iron and coal, and stands around 11 feet high. Stainless steel discs set into the sculpture represent the tokens carried by miners to determine who was below ground in the event of accidents. The Forest of Dean Geomap is a sculpture showing the geology and mines of the area, constructed by David Yeats of Mitchell Dean. Metal discs represent the locations of the mines and quarries, with black lines representing coal seams and white lines for railway routes. My walk began at the north end of New Fancy Car Park. I turned right onto a track on the line of a disused railway, which was a branch line serving the colliery. The Forest of Dean lies in western Gloucestershire and on the borders of Monmouthshire and Herefordshire. The forest is characterised by more than 42 square miles of mixed woodland, one of the surviving ancient woodlands in England. A large area was reserved for royal hunting before 1066 and remained as the second largest crown forest in England. Although the name is used loosely to refer to the area between the rivers Wye and Severn, the Forest of Dean proper has covered a much smaller area since medieval times. In 1327, it was defined to cover only the royal domain and parts of parishes between the hundred of St. Brevels, and after 1668, covered the royal domain only. The forest proper is within the civil parishes of West Dean, Lidbrook, Cinderford, Rusbridge and Drybrook, together with a strip of land in the parish of English Bickner. At a T-junction, I turned left onto a gravelly track, which went straight across the track bed of the Seven and Y Railway's mineral loop line.
The track then dips down to cross the line of the Forest of Dean Central Railway, the route of which was prepared, but the scheme was abandoned before the tracks were even laid here. Crossing the Blackpool Brook, I continued straight ahead on the green damp track as it rose through plantations, which included lime and Scots pine. The track curved left, then climbed to the crest of a ridge, where I turned left on a good green path, with lots of evidence of use by wild boar. The path gradually gained height through Middle Ridge enclosure. came to an end at a stony track. I turned left on this, then went straight on between boulders on a thin path, which skirted the boundary fence of a sawmill on the site of Lightmore Colliery, with its substantial spoil heap and gradually decaying engine house. Beyond here, I crossed a stream and climbed up onto a cycleway, which I followed to the left. From childhood to my mid-thirties, I spent a lot of time in the Forest of Dean. When I was a boy living in Chepstow, I used to come here a lot with family, as they enjoyed coming here for days out and picnics. And in the end, it became an annual tradition to come here for my birthday, because they knew I loved the forest so much. When I was a little bit older, I used to catch a bus and buy one of those day rover tickets where you could travel on the buses all day. And I used to travel to point A and do a walk through the forest somewhere, and then pick up the bus again at point B. It was great, and that was how I really got to know the forest more thoroughly. Then later on again, when I was older and moved to the Bristol and Somerset area, I still came to the Forest of Dean a lot. Even though there were nice places locally to where I lived over there, I still preferred coming to the Forest of Dean because it was just the best place on earth. And coming here today, after all this time, I have to say, I still love the forest probably more than anywhere else. I finally arrived at the Spruce Ride, a well-surfaced and wide track, with the trees standing around 10 metres back on each side. I turned right onto the ride and headed arrow straight through the woodland, mainly century-old Norway spruce of St. Lowe enclosure.
The spruce ride eventually came out onto a road, along which I walked for a short distance to my next place of interest. Well, I'm now standing in front of one of the most important buildings in the Forest of Dean. The Speech House was the administrative building of the Forest of Dean, lying at the centre of the forest on the road from Colford to Cinderford. The building was originally constructed as a hunting lodge for Charles II, and the Speech House was authorised by the Act of 1668 as part of a reorganisation of the open land in the area, and its construction was finished in 1682. It hosted the Court of the Speech, a sort of parliament for the verderers and free miners managing the forest, game and mineral resources of the area. It was badly damaged in the Revolution of 1688, but repaired soon afterwards. Around 1840, it began to be used as an inn, and by the late 19th century, it was functioning as a hotel, which it continues to do. During all my visits to the Forest of Dean, I've passed Speech House many, many times, but I've only actually ever been inside on the one occasion. Now that would have been on one of my walks, one of my many walks here, and I stopped inside the bar and had a drink, but it was just that one occasion. But when people come to the Forest of Dean, I feel it really is worth coming to see Speech House for yourself because it really is such a landmark building. Just before I moved on from Speech House, I took a look at the obelisk opposite. It was so nice to see Speech House again after all these years. And even though I didn't go inside again, it was still lovely to see it again. Well now, I'm just about to see something else which is exciting. To the southeast of Speech House is Speech House Lake, a small lake created in 1975 by damming a stream at the head of the Blackpool Brook Valley. I took a gentle stroll along the east side of the lake. The last time I came to the Forest of Dean was just over 12 years ago, and that seems like a lifetime away now. On that particular occasion, I do remember saying that I probably would never come back to the forest again. Well, I had my reasons for saying that at the time, which I won't go into now because I told the story 12 years ago. But for whatever those reasons were, there is nothing on this earth that's going to stop me coming to my favourite place. And coming back here today, I can still say with absolute confidence the Forest of Dean is my absolute favourite place on earth. 
I just love it here. I can't say what it is, whether it's a childhood thing because I just got to know it so well from childhood, I don't know. But I just feel so much at home here, more than anywhere else I've been to. There are some lovely places I've been to, but this is where my heart is. The Forest of Dean is always where my heart has been, and I think it probably always will be. There was a thin path alongside a stream at the far end of the lake, which I struggled to find at first as it was blocked by several fallen trees. But when I did find it, I made my way onwards. track along which I was walking approached an attractive railway bridge. I walked under the bridge, then climbed steeply left to gain the track bed of the railway. I then crossed over the bridge, where there was a sign identifying it as Central Bridge. I'm almost at the end of my walk now, just a short distance to go, and then I'm back at New Fancy where I started. Arriving back at New Fancy, I had completed my walk, so I decided to take one more look at the view from the top of the spoil heap. It had been wonderful returning to the Forest of Dean after so many years, and after today I knew this visit would not be my last. <laughs>